Good morning, everybody. Here we go again. We are going to be talking more about how the sun seems like it's moving because at different times of the day, the sun seems to be in a different place in the sky. We said yesterday that it rises in the east. That's the beginning of the day in the morning, so we call it sunrise. And it sets in the west. Bedtime, the end of the day, it sets in the west, so we call it sunset. This is a pattern, scientists, right? It happens over and over again. I can still expect that tomorrow morning, the sun will be rising in the east and nowhere else because it never happens any other way. It's always a pattern. We are gonna do something kind of fun today, okay? We're gonna be talking about sun shadows. Now we can't really look at the sun because it's too bright, it'll definitely hurt our eyes. So how can we know where it is? Well, last week we definitely said, right, if I'm standing and the sun is behind me, shining on my back, wouldn't my shadow be on the ground in front of me? Right, and if I turn around a little bit and now the sun is shining on my left shoulder, my shadow would be on my opposite side if I look on my right side on the ground, okay? A long time ago, people discovered that shadows could tell them where the sun is. If I see the shadow in front of me, then I know the sun must be behind me. And then they decided, hey, maybe we could use shadows from the sun to help us keep track of what time of the day it is. Now, this was the very first time anyone even cared about the word time. But they started to realize as the sun is moving and it begins to get lower and lower, darkness is coming. So if we could keep track of the time, we would be able to plan our day, right? So they made this thing called a sundial. And you don't really turn it like the dial hands on a regular clock, but it's a circle just like the clocks we learned about at school. And it has one hand on it that stands up for a reason. We want it to rise up so that it will make a shadow. And then look at all these letters around the clock. The sundial has letters on it. I see X's and I's and V's. What in the world? Our clock doesn't have letters on it. Our clock has numbers on it. Well, guess what, boys and girls? These are numbers. These are called Roman numerals. And this I is really the number one. So two of them are the number two, and three of them make the number three, and four of them make the number four. And then those Romans decided if we keep stacking up more and more and more, it'll be a lot to count. So they said, let's make a V to count by fives. Then this is a V, a five, and a one, and five plus one makes six. And a V, that's a five, and two ones, and five plus two makes seven. Are you seeing a pattern? A V and three ones, and five plus three equals eight. And so believe it or not, the numbers keep going that way. And the next thing you know, they have a clock. So when the sun rises, the shadow will fall on one side of the sundial. And then of course the sun will move across the sky, heading toward the other side of the sky for sunset, and when it gets there, the shadow will have moved also to the other side. Well, we could make our own sundial. Now, boys and girls, this is um, some people might have, if you have a sandbox, you might be able to do this in your sandbox. Get yourself a nice, um, either a thick stick or even a straw and stick it right in the sand. Now, what if you don't have a sandbox? Get a paper plate, poke a hole right in the middle and stick a straw through it. Mom or dad can help you cut some little tabs in the end of the straw so that you could fold them back and tape them under the plate so that your straw will stand up in the middle, okay? 
So you can use a sandbox if you have one, or you can use a paper plate. In this picture, this person has made their numbers around the dial with many multicolored shells. I think it might be easier just to write the numbers if I were you. I know some of you might have some number blocks or magnets, or maybe you just want to um, trace the numbers in the sand or write them directly on the paper plate you've used. And lay your paper plate outside, and if I were you in case it's windy, I would put a rock on it as well maybe to hold it still, right, so it doesn't blow around. Then what I want you to do is, I want you to go outside at different times of the day and trace where your shadow is showing up. And then if you're really feeling clever, you'll write what your regular clock says. So if you went outside at nine o'clock in the morning and this is where your shadow was, trace the shadow and write nine o'clock on it. Then I want you to come out again, say around lunchtime. I bet you will see that your shadow has moved. Trace it again and write the new time. So if you come out later and now the shadow's over here, trace it and write the new time. I would love it if you could revisit your sundial three or four times today at different times during the day and trace the shadow and write what time it was when you did that. And on your last trip outside, can you send me a picture of what your shadows looked like as the sun was moving across the sky throughout the day? People used to do that and they watched it. So what we're gonna do Hopefully it's gonna be sunny. If not, we can try it tomorrow. And either use a stick in the ground or make one with a straw and a paper plate, right? Um, mark, it with, mark some shadow times, remember? With, this person used seashells. I think it might be easier to use numbers so that you can count them. And I would also suggest that you weigh down your plate with a heavy rock or something so it doesn't blow away. Come outside three or four times and trace where you see the shadow forming. Now boys and girls, I want you to look in your science notebook. This page right here is one we're not going to do. It's going to be too hard for us to do this one from home. What I would really like you to do is turn to this page. So if you go out at three times to check your sundial, look at it one time in the morning and draw what you see. Look at it again at lunchtime and draw what you see. And then go out right before dinner and draw what you see. And here's where you could write down what time it was when you went. And what did you notice? Certainly throughout the day, the sun was in lots of different places, wasn't it? Yeah. And that is definitely a pattern that will happen over and over again. And you have just made very scientific observations. Well done, everybody. And the last thing we're going to do today is I have a video for you um, of Homeschool Pop. And it's a great review of all the 3D shapes that we have been learning. Okay? And then you'll do another video about bike safety. This one is a fun story called Duck on a Bike. So these links that you will need are right in the class story post for today. And then grab yourself some lunch or a snack, go out and check your sundial one more time, and then come back for our Super Kids lesson. I'll see you in a little while.